Good evening, sir. Good evening.
All right, good evening, everybody. Good evening, sir. All right, we have, yeah. yes, I think I can wait uh, probably another two minutes. Let's wait another two minutes because there are only none of you. I think I need at least 10 or 11 of you before I begin. So let's wait another two minutes or so. And the persons who want to share their papers, just have it ready to share screen so that we can comment. Um, I think I've seen some, so Leroy sent me something. I don't know if Leroy edited what he sent me. And um, I think um, Sherian also sent me something. So if they have not made any corrections, we, I can still share screen so we can comment on the strengths and or weaknesses of those papers. And if anybody else wants to share, um, this is the opportunity to do so because your mid-semester is next week. So let's wait another two minutes or so. All right, I think we can start. Let's, let me just go through the list of persons who are on the platform. I think that's a better way to start. So there's some sense of, um, so everybody can be accounted for in terms of their attempt. So Shane Nugent, go ahead for me, share screen. Let's see what you have. And if you haven't done it, people just say you haven't done it. Let us move on and we don't, don't let's not waste each other's time. Shani Nugent. Miss Nugent, I haven't I, I haven't heard from uh, I'm not hearing anything. So what's happening? Good evening, sir. Shane and you can type in the chat. Okay. Oh, you can send it in the WhatsApp group and we share it on screen until you get home. Um, all right. Uh, the other person is Clovin Daniels. Go ahead for me. All right, so you just walk us through your paper. So I'm, I'm seeing the screen. Just walk us through your paper and let me just, I'll make my comments on my sticky pad as you present. We're not hearing you. Can you speak a little loud? I don't know if it's me, but I'm not hearing you so clearly. Um, barely. How about now? Yes, we are. All right. In the expository piece, title 82 to 18, that's my number. The writer main idea is that of an understanding to identify where there is a huge gap, a huge gap between female and male in the, in the tertiary level education. The writer purpose is to explain what cause, causes this wide gap in the higher education field between the opposite sex and the, and the effect it brings towards the society. The writers speak to these prospect, prospective college young men through three languages, strategies, and three language styles. In the first instance, the writer used three language strategies, causal analysis, contrast, and illustration. In the article, the writer outlined causal analysis in point to note that because of the lack of educate, educated men, males, 
it's difficult for much educated female to find suitable partner, which led to them being single. Contract is another strategy being seen in the article where Professor Barry Chevanis stated that the perception of males in regard to academic is girl stuff, where there is no level of seriousness. On the other hand, though, females are more serious and focused in their academics. The writer also illustrates on the dominance of women in the society today and also demonstrates how the society has grown beneficially because of well trained females. Finally, the writer used various language styles, specifically structured sentence, tone, and figurative language. For most part of the article, the writer used loose sentence in outlining the main idea and additionally gives subordinate clause to give the reader information on why there is a huge gap between males and females in the university. The loose sentence conveying an objective of a concern tone. This is because the writer's main objective is to discuss the effect of the lack of qualification of males in the university and how it affects the society. The writer then used figurative, figurative language assonance in showing the repetition of son with the two word doctor and should be a doctor. With this male as little necessity to, to be educated only because it's a single vowel. To summarize, the writer's true explanation is very concerned about the wide gap in the university between males and females and the effect it has on, on the society with the hope for it to be changed. The writers use various language strategies and style to bring attention to this long lasting problem which need to be addressed. All right, thanks, Michelle. All right, so so let me start with the positives. Um, so the the you have very strong organization. So I'm seeing clear introduction, body paragraphs, conclusion, and I'm seeing continuity in terms of topic sentences and so forth. Um, there is so you have that. There is some amount of analysis, uh, some amount of critical analysis, but there are some weaknesses for example in this in your first body paragraph there are when you're talking about um language strategies there it's a little bit repetitive you keep commenting on the effects um the causes and the impacts that the gender inequity has on the society i think that is a bit repetitive and then you again repeated it in your second body paragraph um i would avoid this notion of sentence structure and then they're talking about loose sentence and i don't know where that is coming from i didn't teach you that so i would not comment on that because um so, yes i actually saw it on the powerpoint you gave us regarding the structure sentence all and right so if you're going to comment on st sentence structure that's not the way how you structure um you comment on it all right okay that's um there is very good analysis i like your point about tone i you you kind of match the tone with the writer's purpose which was very very good um so those those are my general comments be careful now in especially in the last sentence of your last um of your second body paragraph or your last body paragraph you kind of regurgitated what was in the passage itself oh yes something i'm seeing missing in it are specific examples from the passage itself yes so the last sentence in your second body paragraph is said with this male has little necessity to be education only because it's a single vowel um that is um i think that's an actual sentence in the passage and it's more Wait. yes go ahead no i was saying that it's something similar to it but i tried to put it in a way to give an example of what the writer was saying about the doctor and doctor yes define assonance let me just remind myself about assonance repetition of, of a sound of a void or you wrong all right all right so you identified the, the assonance but i i think the 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 explanation was a little bit off okay, all right no yes so the ex as i said before the organization is strong there is evidence of critical analysis but there is room for um, improvement and the expression there is also room for improvement in terms of so don't say language styles use the for the second in your thesis when you say language strategies just say yeah. and language techniques don't Technique, say styles okay. and then the style you can discuss under the technique in this instance i'll accept it as that okay okay no problem all right good um 
Very good, um, Clovin. I this would not have failed. This would not have been okay. a failed. Um, paper. Out of ten, sir. Out of twenty, I think this probably is about eleven or twelve. Right, Somewhere there, and you're heading in the right direction. Um, right, thank you, so I'm going to look at papers until six, and then after six, now we we need. I'm going to revise something, then give you something again for you to to do. Um, so Ariana Daly, go ahead for me. Stop sharing for me, Clovin. Thanks. Ariana Daly, if you don't have it to share, just tell me you don't have it, people. So let us move on. All right. Um, sir, I wasn't here um last week. I wasn't feeling well. I just came to that. Okay. Are you new? No, sir. Um, I was here like um for the first few weeks in November. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't feeling well last week, so. Oh, okay. Cause your name sounds new to me. I don't remember calling your name, but um, all right. Okay. Um, Shane and Eugene, did you share the paper in the, in the WhatsApp so I could share and look at it? All right, if you haven't, let's move on. Kanaya Anderson, go ahead for me. And of course, just walk us through your paper and then. Uh, good evening, classmate, good evening, sir. In the expository piece titled 82 to 12, that's my number, the writer's main idea is that there is a wide gap between female and male students attending university. The writer's purpose is to explain to the audience that females are raised in a social environment than males and that males lack the qualification for university. The writer speaks to the audience through three main language techniques and language strategies. In the first instance, the writer uses various language strategies, causal analysis, anecdote, and contrast. The writer uses causal analysis to explain to the audience what was causing a vast gap between males and females enrolled in university and how it impacted their social interaction. Furthermore, the writer uses anecdotes to convey to the audience the experience she encountered with a male who is below her level of standard and to give the audience a better understanding of being educated and uneducated. Moreover, the writer uses contrast to inform the audience of the unequal yoke between a doctor and doctor and all males viewed the whole concept of education. In general, the writer uses these specific language techniques in the context to provide a better understanding of the imbalance of females and males in the university and the educated class. The writer uses diction, diction and tone. The writer uses diction as one of the language styles for the audience to understand, to emphasize the problems dealing with an uneducated male in society. In addition, the writer uses stones at the audience relate to the imbalance in the education class with the hopes that males change their mindset and develop a greater sense of perception in having an education and the significance of being educated. Finally, the conclusion of the expository piece summarizes the importance of males not knowing the value of education from the secondary level leading up to the tertiary level and how it affects their social interaction with an, with an educated individual. Education, education is important to both sexes. It enable, enables us to understand and improve the working of society. Knowledge is power. Okay, so let's start with some positives. Um, so there is evidence of organization. There's some evidence of organization. There is a thesis. And the, in some instances, there's a, um, or in, at least in one instance, we see the topic sentence. I don't know that I, I could not identify the second topic sentence. And there's an attempt to write a conclusion. But there are more weaknesses than strengths in this paper. Um, for example, let's go to the top of the let's go back to the top of the paper. Um, so you said the writer speaks to the audience. You are yet to tell us who are members of the audience. We don't know who these the audience members are. 
You just keep using the word audience, but yeah. we don't. Can you just listen, please? I'm listening, sir. Yes. So, and we don't know who exactly makes up the audience. That's one. You did the same thing with diction. You said the writer uses diction, but we don't know um, how the writer, well, we don't know what you mean by diction. I don't get the sense that we know what you mean by diction. Is it elevated? Is it, um, is it um, simple or whatever it is? With, uh, we don't get any example of diction. You did the same thing for tone. We don't know which specific tone you, um, you're talking about. You just say that the writer uses tone. Um, there are also in your, right, in the anecdote, go back to the, the section that you said about anecdote. You mentioned anecdote. That would have come under strategy. The writer uses anecdote to convey the audience experience he encountered, which is not true. The writer was actually citing, and it, so you, you have correctly identified the anecdote, but the writer is not the female in the encounter, which means that you did not fully understand the passage. The writer was citing an example. The writer says specifically about talking to a colleague at the university about an encounter she had with a doctor. So there is contrast in terms of the interaction between the, between the two, but your interpretation of the passage is off. Um, go back again to the top. In your thesis, which one did you say that you're going to talk about first? In your th based on the thesis that you have there. Which techniques? But which one did you start talking about first? Oh, the language strategies. There you go. So there again, global organization is weak because you promised one thing in the thesis, but did something else in your essay. So if you say that you're starting with techniques, you have to start with techniques. All right. So those particular okay. things you have to be very mindful of. Um, there was a, so thanks, for, thanks Kanaya. There was, as I, as I was commenting on your paper, there's something, there's an error that um, Clovin made in his paper where you were identifying the main idea, but you stated the main idea as purpose. All right, um, so be careful of that. Thanks, Kanaya. Stop Thank sharing. You, sir. Yes, yeah. stop sharing. All right. Um, sorry, sir, good afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, just get the so again, I'm still at work. Okay. So I'm using my cell phone. I sent my document in the WhatsApp chat. I'm not finished as, um, I'm not finished though, but I sent what I have. Okay. Um, Kevon, go ahead for me, Kevon Bailey. I haven't seen you at class in a long while, Kevon. Have you been coming to class? I don't remember seeing you. Go ahead, Kevon. Are you if you if you have not done the homework, just say you haven't done it. Let's move on. Because there's a lot of things that we have to do. Kevon Bailey, I'm talking to you, sir. You're not responding. Okay, so I'll just take it that he's not in the class. Um, Kimani Grant. Um, afternoon. Yes, afternoon. Um, background was is not suitable um, to be speaking right now, so that is the reason why. But I think that I wasn't here for the last class. Did you watch the recording? Because it was posted. No, I didn't get the opportunity to watch it. Okay, all right. Um, Kimani Grant, go ahead for me. Good afternoon, everyone, um, or good evening. So, in the article, in the article 82 to 18, that's my number, the writer uses the exposition writing style to inform and explain their main idea, which is that there's a large gap in the success ratio between males and females, not only in school, but in society as a whole. The writer's purpose is to expound on the reason behind the disparity in the success ratio and to show the difference between the different things that might have contributed to it. Throughout the article, the writer uses different types of language techniques and strategies. In the first instance, the writer uses various language techniques, explicitly alliteration and classification. The writer uses alliteration when they spoke about the matchup between the doctor, the doctor and the doctor, showing that despite their Despite it having a one vowel difference, the two are nothing alike. Classification is used to highlight 
the fact that the genders are the focus, especially the males, showing the trouble that they are currently facing in society. Finally, the writer uses anecdote, causal analysis, and contrast. The language strategy, anecdote was used to make the reader visualize the incident that took place between the doctor and the doctor at the beach, showing that despite the gap in their career path, the man still had the confidence to approach her. I should have had cause and, cause and effect right here. Were used to show the reader the difference, the different cause that might have led to decline in the male success rate in society and how it's been affected them since then. Lastly, the writer uses contrast to show both genders were raised differently and due to how they were nurtured, it led to a different outcome that is being shown now. Where's the conclusion? Okay, so no conclusion. So that would mean you would have you'd have lost five marks already because there isn't a conclusion. Um, uh, can you can you go to your introduction? Where is the main idea? Can you show me where in that uh, you have the main idea? All right. So the writers use it. So you have conflated the purpose and because if you say to inform that's purpose you notice what you said the writer uses the exposition writing style i don't know why you need to I'll say all of that to inform isn't that purpose yes sir right right um your first body paragraph is woefully underdeveloped i would i would have failed that paragraph it was if it was under exam condition is classification a technique or a strategy One, I wasn't sure about that. I'm pretty sure it was a um, strategy, sir. Uh, sure strategy. But I gave you a list of. I'm the person who's talking. Can you mute your mic, please? But um, Kimani, didn't I give you a list of strategies? Did you, when you write this thing, yes. did you go and look at the list? Yes, sir, you did. Did you go and look at the list that I gave you? I used some out of it, which would have been the, um, the cause and effects, sir. No, I'm talking about classification in your first body paragraph. You said that oh, you're no, going to talk about no, language sir, I techniques. Didn't, I didn't use that. And how many things are you? So, so in other words, the, that paragraph already, you don't get any mark for classification because it's not a technique. How many things are you supposed to talk about in each body paragraph? Three. Right. How many did you talk about in your first paragraph? Two, sir. Right. So this is a failing paper. I hope you know that, right? This, I would fail this on the exam condition because one, there's no conclusion. So that's five. The rest of the paper, I'm going to mark out of 15. The first body paragraph would probably get two marks because, uh, because it mentioned alliteration. Um, but outside of that, you wouldn't get any marks. And then two, the essay is very repetitive. You keep repeating the doctor, doctor kind of thing. You said it in your first, I'm not giving any marks for saying the same thing twice. You don't get marks for saying the same thing twice, you know. And I think I've said it in, the, in, the, in other lectures too. You cannot repeat the same example and get an additional mark. All right, so be warned. Thank you very much, sir. Um, uh, Leroy, go ahead for me. Even though I've, I read your, you sent me something and I read it, but I still want you to share it with the class so persons can see what's happening. I'm sir. Yes? Just got home, I'm trying to set up my laptop. All right, so let me Just share it. Just got home, I'm trying to yeah. set up my laptop. While you're doing that, I'm going to share the paper, okay? Did you make any additions to the paper? No, sir. I was at work, sir, so I didn't get a chance to. All right, so I'm going to share it, and then you walk us through your paper, okay? Sir, I'm using my phone, sir. I can't see from my phone. I too, too, print a little bit too small. What is wrong with Leroy? I'm coming, All right. I'm coming, I'm coming, sir. Let me get my laptop. All right. Out. So while you are setting up yourself, we'll move on to someone else. Um, Marisa, Marisa Bailey, go ahead for me. Marisa Bailey, are you there? I sent it in the chat, but I want you to read the paper. How we are we how we going to how are we going to know look at the paper if you even if you send it, who's going to read it? Because I'm not reading it. So are you able to read the paper? 
Miss Bailey, talk to me because we need for you to read the paper. I'm not reading anybody's paper. You're going to walk us through your, entire, your own paper. All right, so she's on her way home. So whenever she gets home, she'll read it to us. Um, Marsha Riley Lamont, go ahead for me. So I'm going to share what I have. It's not quite complete, but I'll still share. Give me a second. Okay. All right, everybody, please get your papers. Please get um in the mode of sharing screen because I'm going through the list and almost everybody's name will be called. All right. That's too large. Is it too big? Yes, that's too large. Done. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, good afternoon, fellow students. Good afternoon, sir. Um, in the expository piece titled 8218, that's my number. The writer's main idea is that the ratio of females in tertiary education is greater than males. The writer's main purpose is to explain to educators the causes of gender imbalance observed in tertiary level institutions. In the article, the writer uses three language strategies and three language techniques to substantiate his assertion. In the first instance, causal analysis, exemplifi exemplification, problem and solution are the main language strategies employed by the writer. Through the use of causal analysis, the writer argues that in the education system, the underachievement of boys directly correlates with a shift in the teaching from male to female dominance. Causal analysis is also used to solidify the writer's objective, which is evident in paragraph three, which demonstrates how the use of scientific evidence highlights the scholastic aptitude of boys versus girls. It is stated in the paragraph that um, girls between the ages of 12 and 18 years old are generally two years more advanced than boys. The audience is able to associate the writer's objective with everyday situations through the use of exemplification. This is evident in the recollection of a professor's experience at a beach with a male who was not academically inclined. Problem and solution, the final language strategy, suggests that institutions should introduce alternate learning mechanisms to males, which will create a balance in the academics of the sexes. Let me go. Finally, the writer uses various language techniques, in particular, register, rhetorical question, and pun. The register is formal yet objective as it exhibits a great level of concern for the viability of males in a female dominated society. On the other hand, the writer uses pun to introduce humor in the article, which changes the mood of the audience, but not to detract his objective. This technique wittily highlights the glaring difference between the educated and non-educated class with the use of words such as doctor and doctor. I was trying to do something for the rhetorical. It can be argued that the rhetorical questions posed by the writer to the intellectual audience can invoke a sense of guilt regarding lack of techniques, lack of effective techniques used in males. I was supposed to mention something about how they are taught here, so forgive me. Mm -hmm. um, in concluding, the writer is concerned about the ratio of females to males within the education system is reverberated throughout the expository piece and hopes that measures can be implemented to correct the matter. The writer uses various language techniques and strategies to bring to the attention of educators that the noticeable disparity between the males and females in schools is attributed to the type of academic programs being offered to men. All right, so this is actually way more sophisticated than what I've read from everybody from both classes. This is more what I'm looking for. And this is what we call critical analysis. All right, with the, there's a level, even though there are some weaknesses, there's a level of thorough, there's a rigor that I liked in this that I'm not seeing in the others. So one, that one of the strengths that I like with this is that you're citing examples from the actual article. What some persons are doing, the writer uses exemplification and, and they move on, not realizing that you're not analyzing, you're only making mention of the, of the, um, of the strategy. So go back up for me. Go back to the top for me. All right, so explain. All right, so here now, would you say that the audience members are only educators? Would it be only educators? 
because I think whose paper mentioned, there's somebody who mentioned, um, I think it was, I don't remember who mentioned that it's not just education, but that the gender imbalance will impact the society as a whole. Who presented on that? Who mentioned I think that it's in the their... first person who presented? Yes, and that was actually very, very accurate. So, the, in other words, the writer is just using the education system as an example to show the implications and the impact it will have on the wider society when there's a gender imbalance. Right? That's something that didn't come out in your paper, though. He didn't mention that it kind of stuck to the school part, um, the tertiary education. The scroll down for me. So there was a there was a there is a relatively good analysis of crit causal analysis, but the same was not shown for the other two strategies that you mentioned. So if you look at the, the number of lines that were used to discuss causal analysis, then compare that now to how you mentioned exemplification, you just kind of mention it. So the audience is, uh, is able to associate the writer's objective with everyday situations through the use of exemplification. This is evident in the recollection of a professor's experience at the beach with a male who was not academically inclined. What you should have said, other examples or other ex um, cases or instances of exemplification that the writer used to prove this point was also when da 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 and da 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 da. Yes, what I mean? Yes, um, right. And then, no, you don't need to say problem and solution. Um, as a strategy, the way how you write it. So you can say the writer sees gender inequity as a serious problem and hopes that educators, administrators, and, and whoever, whoever will find a, po a possible solution, uh, suggesting that the institution should introduce alternative learning mechanisms. That's so you, you don't have to say problem or solution. Just by saying that the writer identifies the problem of gender in inequity, something that you missed well i won't say it because it might come up in other people's paper the moment i say it so for example i i i there is there is a there is the, the cause and analysis really plays out when what the writer is saying is that the problem is not the education system you know you know what is the problem the writer the, the writer identifies can anybody tell me what the problem is what's the real problem based on the article what is the real problem does anybody know what's the real problem or that was what does what, it have anything to do with how they're raised sir ex, that's the major problem that's what you that's what i thought was going to be mentioned it so is the, the family also right so it is a, it is a socialization is how it how boys and girls are socialized that is what is causing the problem in the society and that is really what the writer is suggesting that we change how boys and girls are socialized. So in other words, the writer is saying that girls are socialized in a particular way and they're better prepared for school, especially since most of the teachers are female versus boys who are not as prepared for school based on how they are also raised. See my point? But I'm telling you this is a way better, this is a more sophisticated way. Remember two people that you can break the language strategies into two paragraphs, you know. You can break the strategies into two paragraphs or even the you language know, techniques. Sir. Yes, because you have up to 600 words. It's between four to 600 words. You can break it into two. Go to your second body paragraph for me. I like the, 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 the when you said it, I would say, so the register is, is predominantly formal, but not in all instances. So when the register is formal, and there are parts when it is informal, you describe the register as being complex. But I like your analysis in terms of the register is formal, you know, in part, um, as it exhibits a great level of concern for the viability of males in a female dominated society. I wouldn't have said it that way. The level of concern because it has serious gender inequity has serious implications on the society, which is exemplified in the encounter between a doctor and a doctor. That's how I would have phrased it. All right. But I really like the way how you're thinking. This is really what this is critical analysis. This is the first one I'm seeing that I say, yes, the person is heading clearly, clearly in the right direction. Other persons are kind of hinting at it, kind of mentioning things, but the examples are missing. All right. And if you do literature, this is really you would have a strength in this area because literature students, that's really what they do when they're writing papers, critical analysis. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Riley Lamont. Thank you, sir. It took me a whole heap of hours to do this.
Well, Sigma there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Means that you're slowly growing. You're growing academically. You know, you're 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 you are, you are all becoming you know real university students when you have to sit down and do work. All right. So thanks for that. Um, Rasidia Smith, go ahead. Let us see. Um, you can go after Miss Bailey. Rasidia Smith, let us see what you have. Sir, good um good evening. Um just leave work, but I send what I had in the in the WhatsApp because I have my phone. I'm just coming off the plant. All right, so when you're able to share, then you Hello? tell us, okay? I'm still here. So that's I'm saying, when I reach home, sir. I send okay, it in the all right. Okay. All right. Um, go ahead. Um, the person who was asking to share. Go ahead for me. What's her name? Um, Marisa Bailey. Go ahead. You, you said that you can share screen. Go ahead for me. Okay, sir, one moment. I'm bringing it up. Okay. All right, and we kind of have a lot of females sharing. Let's, let's, I think only one male has shared, although we don't have a lot of males in the class still, but want to balance it because the article is speaking about gender imbalance, so we don't want to be exempt. <laughs> we don't want to be doing the same thing, you know, having only females present and the males are not getting are an opportunity yes i am able to see can you just increase the size a little bit from 100 to about 120 just a little <laughs> all right go ahead all right sorry about that all right so in the expository article titled 8218, that's my number, the writer's main idea is that the lack of interest from the male population in pursuing education is alarming and a major concern. This is a general issue across all levels of learning institution which needs to be taken into consideration by youth in our society, their parents or guardians, and the ministries of the nation's government, governing body. The main purpose of the article is to shed light on the norms of society associated with educational imbalance between males and females in the formal education system that have been practiced for generations. The writer speaks to his audience using three language strategies and three techniques. The writer uses contrast in the first paragraph to show the comparison between male and female ratio on the present campus, university campus, describing it as the widest gap in the school's history and that of other scholastic institutions. Causal analysis, which shows all the contributory factors over the generations that led to the imbalance in the education system, as seen throughout the article and provision to technical details appeal to ethos given intellectual theories in reinforcing the writer's point of view on the worrying situation. The writers use of language styles throughout the article, namely imagery, tone, I purbly, the writer used both informal and formal language based on his intended audience. The formal language, which is suitable for the professionals, such as the ministers of education and informal language for non-professionals, such as students and their parents. With imagery, the writer paints a picture to both the professional and the non-professional with the objective to explain the effective, explain effectively the impacts of lack of educated males in society with a sincere and hopeful tone. The writer conveys the importance of the topic of the disconnect of males in the education system that needs to be addressed. To summarize the writer, I think that should be oh the writer da, 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 hold on 
The writer, through explanation and expression, is concerned about the lack of interest in pursuing education from the male population and the impacts it has on society, which needs to be addressed sooner rather than later. The writer uses language strategies and techniques to bring across this ongoing issue by bringing it to the forefront in light of getting urgent attention. Okay, thank you so very much. All right, so a few things. Let's start with the strengths. So we, we're seeing clear organization and we're seeing some amount of evidence of analysis in the, um, in the piece. Can you go back to the top? All right, so one of the things that is missing in, in everybody's paper so far is why is the title, is the article titled 8212? That's my number. I, I don't hear that at all in anybody's analysis. I haven't heard that. And that actually should come out in the when you're talking about cause and analysis, okay? okay. Go to your first body paragraph for me. Your first body paragraph, though it identifies the strategies, it is very weak. Do you notice the length of your first body paragraph? One, two, three, four, five, six lines. Yes. Because it is not, it is not, the analysis is weak. All you have done is kind of mention the, the, the strategies but what you should also do is to cite examples. So you have said, for example, correctly, the writer uses contrast to show the, um, and it can't say contrast to show the comparison because contrast means what? Difference, comparison means showing similarity. So the writer uses contrast to show the differences between the males and females, da, 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 which is echoed in the title, 8212. Um, where there's the, the where um, the university has more female a majority of the students at university are females and um, a small number are males i thought that's where you should have gone so in each part of the paper you're supposed to cite examples that is how you get your your paper is 372 75 in words it's not even 400 words it's not even minimum the minimum okay. that i wanted to comment on you should not write less than 400 words so the analysis in the first body paragraph is a little bit weak. The second body paragraph was much better. But I, second body paragraph, you're going to the first one. Oh, sorry, sir. Second body paragraph. I, I agree with you in terms, of, uh, in terms of who you see as audience. And I love your explanation about the informal register. I would have said informal register instead of saying informal language for okay. like, you know, ministers of education and so forth. In other words, for those persons who are decision makers, are policy makers, and the informal one for the parents and the students. Because I think they are part of the conversation because part of what is being discussed is the way children are raised, how boys are raised, raised differently versus girls. And that that is again contrast. So I like that. Where I think you went off track now is when you mentioned imagery to paint a picture to both the professionals and it with the objective of explaining the impact. You kind of said that already. And that is actually okay. not imagery. Imagery is either, remember their imagery is based on um is based on the five senses. So you have visual image, you have tactile, you have olfactory. So unless the imagery is something that is specific to one of the five senses, you're not supposed to comment on it. Okay, sir. All right. But I love, as I said before, I like your formal informal part. I don't know that the tone is hopeful. I think the tone is one of concern. I think the writer is more concerned than hopeful. Okay. I think the writer is more concerned than hopeful. All right, so I don't know that I would fail this paper because we can see there's some amount of evidence. But in my mind, how I would look at this paper is that this student understands how to write critical analysis and should have done a better job. Okay, sir. That's how I would phrase it in my head. Go down to your conclusion. So this part about an explanation, take that off because it is the explanation comes out because the writer's purpose is to explain the impact of the gender imbalance. That's the only reason why the word explanation is there. You know. Okay. Right, that's the only reason. And then you rightly identify the writer's um, tone here, concern, but you said something else up top. So be careful of that. All right? Yes, sir. All right, thank you very much, Miss Bailey. All right, let me see what time it is. All right, so let me just do a revision of something and then we go back to persons kind of commenting and, and presenting their paper. Stop sharing for me, Miss Bailey. 
All right, so this is a lecture that I did some time ago for students who had the exam to do. All right, so share screen. All right, are you seeing my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, so it says, Nature of the exam, you'll be given a passage to comment on the following in your essay. Main idea, purpose, organizational strategies, language techniques. So it's main idea, purpose, you know, of course, you're going to comment on, um, you're going to also comment on um, discourse and, and, and audience, right? The essay format, introduction, body paragraphs, conclusion. Introduction, main idea, purpose, discourse mode, thesis. Did I miss anything? Audience as well, I miss audience. Here's an example of an, of an introduction. In the persuasive piece titled, I hope it's not this one I did plan to give you. No, no it's not this one. Okay, this is an example of an introduction. In the persuasive piece titled, A Leap Year, the writer's main idea is that cars built in the US are causing harm to the environment. Specifically, the writer focuses on the hybrid car that is believed to, to release greenhouse gases, gases in the atmosphere. The writer seeks to convince because the discourse mode is what? Persuasion, right? So it has to be convinced, dissuade, or persuade. The writer seeks to convince a car, an env car, no, it should be ah. So the writer seeks to convince car and environment enthusiasts, that's the audience, that humans need to be, take better care of the environment so that future people can have it available for use. To convince the audience, the writer uses various organizational strategies and language techniques. All right, so this is a, a, a more fulsome introduction. Everybody gets this? So if you look, I have my thesis, I have my discourse mode, I have my main idea is that, I have my purpose to convince, so it starts with purpose, and then I have my thesis. Finding main ideas. So there are times when the main idea is explicitly stated, right? Maybe a single sentence or a synthesis of words. In that case, what you have to do is to put it in your own words. Even if the main idea is explicitly stated in the passage, you cannot write it back exactly that way. You have to paraphrase it. In other words, you have to put it in your own words. There are instances in which the main idea is not there and you have to do what is called inference, meaning that you have to look at the, the entire piece as a whole and make a suggestion or make a, a, an, an intellectual guess about what is the writer's main idea. All right. So writing about main ideas, main points should not be expressed as purpose statements. So avoid verbs like tell, show, inform or bring across, which suggests purpose. And here they are giving you two examples of, of good and bad examples of purpose. Vague and purposive, improper um, or poor main idea, main idea. The writer wanted to make clear how he felt about bullying and its effect on those who are victims. Not very clear main idea versus this one. The main point is that Jamaicans habitually ignore bullying up bullying abuse is taking place in our school system because many administrators lack the emotional intelligence or the moral fortitude to stop it. And even in this main idea, the writer identifies the audience. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you know what I need to do? I need to send this lecture to you guys. Just remind me. Writing about purpose three main purposes and of course it is not limited to just these words to inform to explain and so forth to educate and so forth to convince persuade or sway to entertain to amuse or to convert to mock to poke fun once it's called persuasion because sometimes it's persuasive but it's not necessarily an argument all right it says identify the dominant purpose in the passage use clear verbs to make purpose statements precise to inform, to convince, to explain, to educate, to persuade, to sway, to entertain, to amuse, to divert. Remember the purpose is linked to the discourse mode. So you can't say the writer's purpose is to inform and then the discourse mode is persuasive. The two don't go together, all right? Writing about purpose, this is no. So a writer's purpose is related to his main point or thesis. The writer's purpose is to expose the culture of bullying 
abuse faced by Jamaican children, highlight the psychological damage it causes, and persuade those who have authority and who have been victimized to bring such abuse to an end. What would be, what would, would if based on this purpose, what would be the discourse mode? What's the discourse mode? We're not hearing you. If somebody's talking, you kind of sound very argument, distant. Sir. First no, argument, sir. The argument is still expository. No, no, argument no, is not expository. Is so this would be persuasive or argumentative, right? Yes, sir. Yes, How sir. do we know? How do we know? Is there any word or phrase in this that gives us a hint? So persuade. 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 So but even the word expose. Right. Remember, expositions don't expose anything. We don't use expose with with um expositions right continuing so consider when discussing intended audience the diction is it simple and can be understood by the average person or complex and may be understood by a special audience so you have to look at certain when you're commenting on diction you look at certain phrases the types of words that are used are the types of phrases that are used are they very technical or elevated are they very simple organization it, is it organized in a format which helps easy comprehension? The content density, are there a lot of ideas and concepts per sentence or few, few which makes comprehension easier? Um, let me not comment on that. We said that already. So the subject matter is of general interest to both students and parents alike. All right, so writing about intended audience. So the passage is intended for a general audience. Can't write that and give me, you have to be very specific who may have a concern about bullying. Well, when it says general audience, this is what makes it specific now. Who may have a concern about bullying because the language use can be easily understood by the average person. The content is of general interest to adults and children alike. There's, there is the use of subheading to help ease comprehension. Examples are given to support the writer's main um, point and it is published in, the daily, in a daily newspaper. And these, I didn't find the internet. I, so here are strategies now. Strategies, these refer to the different ways in which an author arranges and organizes content so that it may help his or her audience to understand or accept the message being communicated and achieve the writer's purpose. Which language strategies can you identify? Cause and effect, definition, and we talked about the various types of definition. We talk about sequencing or chronological order, process explanation, contrast, comparison, expert opinion or authoritative sources, um, short paragraphs and short sentences, if you know. Sometimes short paragraphs and short sentences are used for dramatic effect. That's usually what they're used for. Examples, illustrations, or anecdotes, classification or grouping. The use of the I narration, which means that this is a very, it's very personal to the writer or to the narrator. And the provision of technical details, for example, one of the strategies that was used in the burnout was um, appeal to ethos because the writer gave us a lot of technical detail, especially in the definition of burnout. I don't know if anybody remembered that one, that the definition was very technical. There were certain depersonalization, there were certain terms that were being used um, in, that, in that one that we looked at. Again, these are other examples of language strategies. Um, usually rhetorical question is not really a strategy, it's more a technique, but I'll accept it as such. The discourse mode itself is a strategy, all right? So if you mention discourse mode and it is correct, you do get a mark for that, all right? The, depending on the tone, um, use of testimonials, again, it kind of goes back to the notion of anecdote, although testimonials is where they're citing specific examples, uh, or specific testimonies, quote unquote, but you hardly find that. I don't think you'll find that in um, the piece that I'm giving you. This is now how you write about language strategies, which is partly where many persons are having a challenge. I find that the, the critical, the analysis is not critical. It's just there, but it's not critical. So let's look at some of what they're saying here. It is not enough to simply name the strategy. You must tell how it helps the writer convey his or her message and achieve purpose. 
very important. That's how you get the marks, people. Example, the writer includes statistical information on bullying from the Child Development Agency study to explain how widespread and serious the problem of bullying is in Jamaica. All right. Anecdotal evidence, the writer mentions the case from the Sunday Glean of the young lady who attempted suicide after being bullied in order to introduce his main argument and create sympathy for victims of bullying. Another one, use of short paragraphs. And I know that some of you are going to run to this use of short paragraphs. I will murder your paper if you don't get it right. All right. So don't rush to it unless, unless you see it there and you're able to explain it. The writer uses a number of short paragraphs to emphasize key elements in his arguments against bullying, such as the anecdote of the bullied young lady in paragraph one, an attitude of many insensitive administrators in paragraph four, and to make key points of his message easy to understand. Um, here they are showing examples of not so good um, explanation or analysis versus good, versus a one that is considered much better. So it says, avoid vague explanation of the function of a strategy used by the writer. And, and, and I've, I've been seeing some of that in some of what is being um, was shown on screen. So weak, um, weak analysis, the writer uses subheadings in the passage to organize the material and make it easy to understand. I get a lot of that. I am sure some of you are seeing or hearing your sentences in that specific example versus the writer uses a subheading in the passage to generate interest and focus the audience on specific, on specific segments of content and also to in, indicate the aspect of his topic, which he will go on to discuss. Language techniques now. Language techniques, as I said, you comment on the various types of rhetorical um, devices or literary devices, as well as in the case, I'll accept style as a language technique, for example, diction, tone, register, and all of that as a part of style. All right. And how you explain that is rhetorical question. Well, I'm not going to define you should you guys should actually know um, some of the definition. The ones that I think you might not know is hyperbole is an exaggeration often used to add humor. So hyperbole is also called overstatement or exaggeration. Remember, repetition is not just repeating a word. Usually they repeat a phrase or a sentence. All right. And of course, you have to look at the context in order to make a determination about why something would be repeated. So you can't see the word but being repeated throughout the entire thing. And then you say, oh, the writer is repeating the word but and saying that that is a technique. You're not getting any mark for that. And here they are explaining now um, how you actually write about technique. It is not enough to simply name the language technique. You must tell how it helps the writer to convey his message and achieve his or her purpose. For example, the writer uses rhetorical questions like who's responsible? Here they are citing an example to cause readers to pause and reflect on the extent to which dr drinkers are to be blamed for the ill effects of drinking alcohol. Another one, the writer uses the metaphor an angry cyber finger to demonstrate the displeasure and the extent to which online users blamed the bar's owner for the consequences which alcohol drinkers brought upon themselves. All right, so those are examples of metaphors. These are, I think these, these are when they gave us. Uh, I don't want to teach a pathos. It's really for argument. And I think that's, all right, allusion, no. Yes, 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 allusion. So allusion, use of allusion to Jamaica. No, let me not teach you this one. If you don't know it, I'm not going to teach you because it can be a little bit. All right, use of apostrophe or direct address. No, let me not teach you this one. All right, this I'll go back to. Again, Talking about language techniques, looking at weak versus strong explanation or analysis. The weak one, the writer uses repetition to bring his point across. I'll just put the zero and move on. No mark for that. Versus, the writer uses repetition of the word torment four times in the passage to emphasize the negative psychological impacts that bullying has on its victims. Is it making sense, guys? Making sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, here's another one. The writer uses a metaphor to show that he does not agree with bullying. And please don't say the writer uses metaphor to compare 
um, one thing to another because all you're doing is telling me the definition of metaphor and I know how to define metaphor. That's why I'm the teacher. All right. Versus this one, no, the writer uses metaphor, making my every waking moment a horror story to illustrate the constant terror and fright of being bullied. And once you're mentioned, if you mention any language technique, uh, you must cite an example. So don't tell me the writer uses metaphor and I don't see you cite the metaphor. I'm not giving you any mark for that. If you say the writer uses metaphor, ensure you cite the example of where metaphor was used. All right. Again, weak versus strong. I don't want to comment on apostrophe. This is right. Credibility. Um, the information is credible because it makes the writer's point clear and easy to understand. That's BS versus the information is credible because it is based in part on the personal experience of the author. It is supported by evidence from a trusted government agency. It is current within five years and because it generally agrees with what we know about the effects of bullying on victims. We did talk about tone. And we did say tone is a particular way of expressing feelings or attitude that will influence the reader. I don't want to get into all of that because tone is not necessarily the hardest thing. So tone can range from sarcastic to humorous to serious to questioning to angry to persuasive to informative. Of course, there are various tones writers can achieve using language. However, the language chosen depends on the purpose and the point they want to emphasize or convey. Um, that's just some practice that I, oh yes, complex tone. This one I wanted to explain to you now. So complex tone, this is when there is no dominant tone. In this instance, the student has to explain the varying shifts in tone, which may happen from paragraph to paragraph, and why, and explain why there's a shift in tone. We did say this already about organizing your essay. Introduction, at least one body paragraph for each of the task in the question, appropriate transitions and connectives between and within paragraphs, which most of you have been doing so far. So that's not an issue. And you have your conclusion. And that is it. Any questions? Sir, um, I really like the third. Um, and we're not hearing you so clearly. Can you hear me now, sir? Yes, I'm hearing you much better now. I really like the presentation. It made things much clearer for me. So is it safe to say that literary devices can be is a form of technique? Yeah, it's a technique. Yes, man. All the literary devices are techniques. Okay, thank you. I'm going to email this lecture to you right now. So let me just email it to you. Usually I try not to email my lectures because they are not prepared by an institution. I try not to, you know, you have to kind of hold on on certain things. Uh, but let me email it. Oh, Lord, they, they can keep meeting him on Jesus. Another meeting tomorrow. Hmm, faculty. Um, yes. Does this slide, sir, ha have a comprehensive list of language techniques? Because sometimes I do get confused between a strategy and a technique, and that is where I had the greatest challenge. So just remember that strategy is how the, pay, the, the essay is organized. Once it says strategy is how the paper is organized. Understand? Kind of. And then when, when you hear, when you think technique, just think style or literary devices. Style or literary, literary devices. De right, okay. for, for technique. Just always think that. Okay. When I, because I, when I, I, when I was in sixth form and I did communication studies, that's how I, that's how I made a distinction in my head. So technique, literary devices, strategy, you're talking about how the thing is organized. Um, students, all right, so student advisory, revision, lecture on this course, analysis. I think I saved it on the desktop for ease of access. Yes, here it is. No, that's not it. Here it is. So students, please see the attach for your mid-semester.
All right, let me know if you have received it. Check your student email. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes. Rashid Smith, sir. I just reached home, sir. So if you still want to view mine, you can. Like I said, I wasn't finished. And based on what I was listening to when on my way home, I know there's a lot of errors, but I still want to hear your critique because remember that uh, Tuesday night I told you that I didn't understand and you said that I should still go ahead and then present in class. Okay. All right. Or probably after class, I can stay about probably at 10 minutes. No, man, I want to share it in class. Um, but I want you to confirm whether or not you have received the email I just sent first. Okay. Anybody seeing the email? Not yet, sir. Not yet. So you sent, you sent it on Canvas? Yes, Canvas I sent it on Canvas. Yes, sir, I just get a... Uh, uh, all right, it let me check Canvas. Up. Oh, it just came up? Okay, good. So you can, you guys can actually go back to that lecture and um, it should assist you in terms of just overall revision. And I think also last night, did I send a, I think I sent a full essay. I think I did, but anyhow, go ahead, um, Miss Smith, go ahead. Let's see what you have. Sir, did you send the PowerPoint that you just presented with? Yes. Okay. So you have to walk us through Miss Smith, all right? So you have to read your own paper and then I comment after. Okay. In the expository piece, the title 8218, that's my number. The author's main idea is that the writer wishes to show the gender imbalance faced by males and how lack of education poses a proportion, it should be disproportion in the education system. The purpose is that he wants to explain to young adults, especially males, the reason why there are more females attending university than males, which the writer achieve by using illustration, classification, and pun. Why this can go down? Okay. In the first instance, the writer uses pun when he stated from a, position, from a position of ignorance, the difference would only be a single vowel, which speaks to the level of tolerance male has due to, male has to, press, oh, yeah, oh, sorry, sorry. Which, um, which speaks to the level of tolerance male has, has due to, proceed on to tertiary, sorry, some error is there, so tertiary level and how highly they view themselves despite not fully being educated since more emphasis were given to females on how to conduct themselves in order to succeed in life. The writer also also used illusion about how females were bought. Is it illusion what, or illusion? Illusion about how females were brought up to be submissive in order to be accepted in society. Finally, the writer used classification as a way as a way to show his audience the percentage of females to male attending the University of the West Indies and how girls between a particular age group are measured based on their maturity level of than those of the opposite sex. However, as you ventured further in the article, you will realize how the writer used cause and effect to highlight the different factors which contribute to the contrast of both gender in society. The writer also used anecdote as he reminisced on a conversation he had with a female doctor friend who had an encounter at the beach one day with a male conductor. All right, so there are so many issues with this paper, a lot of issues. So let's go from the top. Why did you stop sharing screen, ma'am? Oh, sorry, sir. How am I going to comment if you are not sharing screen? All right, so there are several issues with this. Scroll up to the top for me. And I'm going to do, do it by way of per, uh, by questioning. Okay, so first of all, where's the thesis? Where's the thesis? 
That's my first question. Where's your thesis? Third out of any. Okay, all right. So you know that you're losing marks, right? Yes, sir. Um, one of the things that I see you doing, you're conflating main idea and purpose. You say the writer's main idea is that the writer wishes to show. That's not main so idea. I'm barely hearing you. Oh, sorry. My mic. You're hearing me now? Yes, sir. Yeah, my I kind of shifted my mic. So I'm saying the second issue is that you're conflating main idea with purpose. Do we see that guy? She says the author's main idea is that the writer wishes to show. Once we see that word to show, we know that what she's going purpose, not main idea. But the problem it becomes even greater because they said the purpose is that. <laughs> so you're supposed to do the opposite. The purpose oh. is to, and the main idea is that, but you did the reverse. So purpose is always to something, and then uh, main idea is that. So you're not supposed to have to show any at all when you're talking about main idea. The, the, the thesis is actually very easy to write because I tell you exactly what to write for your thesis. So it's not as if, you know, so you shouldn't be losing marks for thesis when I actually give you the thesis. I think I give, I've given several, about four different ways of how you can write your thesis statement. All right, this first body paragraph, no. Scroll down to the first body paragraph. Is the focus in this first body paragraph on techniques or strategies? Is the focus on strategies or is the focus on techniques? Uh, strategies, sir. Is PON a strategy? No, sir, it's a technique. All right. Is illusion a strategy? Oh, that's a technique. It's there you go. Classification is a, is a strategy. Class classification is a strategy. Then the other issue you know, with, the, with them now is that where is the actual PON? Which word, remember, pun is play on word, you know. So where's the actual pun? Because if you say the writer uses this pun, you have to cite the example. Because I don't know if you just, you just remember that device, I just write it down on paper. Just like how students love, anytime you ask them for a device, they write metaphor. So you have to put the actual example of pun for me to know that you're actually, you actually see that there's evidence of pun. So in other words, sir, um, whatever strategy or device we use, we, we actually insert it and then expand on it in our own words. So, right. So in the case of technique, you have to cite the example once it's not too long. In the case of strategy, you kind of have to paraphrase because if it's the dominant technique, you can cite the entire essay because it could be that the entire essay is organized in problem and solution form. Right? Okay. And then, no, when you said allusion, you have one sentence. The writer also used allusion about how females we we brought up how did you reach in the paragraph you said we so clearly you are a part of it how did you reach in it so it should be where <laughs> okay so you see so this is a caution to everybody if you explain a strategy using three lines all the other strategies must also be explained in three lines in other words there must be an equal amount of analysis of each strategy or each technique no in other words sir. yes and your body paragraph should be of equal length one paragraph can't be five lines and the other paragraph is 10 lines you're going to lose marks for organization and generally that's a rule of writing that's a rule of writing that the paragraphs are all of the same length that's a general rule of writing the second body paragraph now go to your second body paragraph oh first of all don't move where is the topic sentence in your first body paragraph yes i i, I wanted to ask that where's the topic sentence in the first body paragraph sir i didn't i didn't do any of those i was just uh, focusing on the paragraph setting because remember i told you that the last two class when you were going through this i didn't understand this part Mm -hmm. So I was trying to focus on No, but the thing is, if you don't understand, I gave you the topic sentences. Remember, you know, I showed you actually how to write a topic sentence. All you need to say in the first instance, the writer uses three main language strategies. You don't need to write anything else. And in this, in the, in, finally, the writer uses three main language techniques. And that is it. Okay, sir. The challenge that you'll have now is when it comes down to the explanation. So I showed you how to write a thesis. I showed you how to write a topic sentences. And I showed you how to write a conclusion. The only issue you really should be having is the analysis. Okay, go to your second body paragraph now. 
So there's no there's no um topic sentence, but here the issue, this the issue I'm having with this. This is no longer academic. You start having a kind of what I you start talking to us readers because you say as you venture, so you're talking to me, Robin Clark, who marks the paper, as mm -hmm. you venture further in the article, you will realize you can't write like that. You have to write in the third person, and this is always written in the present tense. Remember, I told you that, right? Yes, so it's sir. good that you made all the errors now. So I've pointed out some of the things. So try not to repeat those errors next week. When next week is your exam? Tuesday. Tuesday. There you go. You have all the time in the world to prepare. All right. Sir, so, what, what, sir, what I'll do, I'll try to see if I can work on it tonight or tomorrow or, when, or over the weekend and then send it to you for you to critique. No props, because some persons have been doing that. I've looked at Sherry and, and Leroy's paper. They sent, sent them to me this morning. And before I went into the bathroom, it took me five minutes to look at one. And I could comment and send it back to Leroy and say, okay, this is good. This is fix this, fix that. And I did the same, same thing with Sherry Ann. All right. So once, and as I said before, all you need to do, people, is to practice. That's all you need to do. You have to practice. All right, so I see a raised hand. Yes, stop sharing from me, Miss Smith. Hold on, I see a raised hand. Sir, Abrams. I didn't hear your response from you, sir. That's not true, Miss 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 Bartley. I responded. Unless the sent button. Unless the sent button never did a word, but I actually responded. <laughs> no, sir. I don't have an email response from you. <laughs> All right, let me check. It could be that I thought I sent. No, seriously, I did. It could be that I think that I sent the I I press sent, but it didn't go through. So let me go to Sherry Ann. Oh, but I read it. Yes, I did read it and I actually, you know, I actually responded. I probably responded in my head. Look like I didn't. Um, yeah, man, I read this paper, man, I remember, because it was um, stronger than Leroy's. All right, so I'll, re I'll respond, okay? Just give me a few. No problem, sir. All right, um, this is, so Rochelle Abraham Stewart, I'm seeing your hand and afterwards, Shanika Thompson. Go ahead, Rochelle Abraham Stewart. Is it that you want to share or is it that you have a question? No, sir. Well, sir um, all right, go ahead and share, that. please. Sir, so even though it's incomplete, I have a challenge because I don't think I'm grasping. Um, this, this is who, Rochelle Abrahams? Yes, sir. So I'm having a challenge, so I really want for you to give me a critique. Okay. All right. So in the expository piece titled 8218, that's my number, the writer's main idea is that more girls than boys are enrolled and is, su and is successful in school because the social and educational system is so designed for the success of a female. The writer's main purpose is to explain to parents, guardians, and educators the factors that contribute to gender inequalities in, in the education system and the broader societal, social and societal problems that arise from gender imbalance, from the gender imbalances. The writer speaks to the intended audience through three main language strategies and three main language techniques. In the first instance, the writer uses various language techniques. Language uh, strategies. Language strategies, causal effects, expert opinion and anecdotes. Causal effect is used by the writer to explain that because girls are organized into system into systematic conformist behavioral patterns and rules of socially accessible, acceptable conduct, they are more susceptible to learning and can effectively adapt to the rigid regime. As a result of that type of systematic approach by females, as a result of that type of systematic approach by female teachers, the boys are of the notion that academics is girl stuff. The effect, this effect causes boys to shy away from academics and move towards finding areas that they can be dominant in. The article is not based on just the view of the writer. Several expert opinions are you several expert opinions are were used are used are namely, are because it's right, present tense right sir are used namely from professor errol miller mark figueroa and barry chevanese in order to 
use a credible approach to convince parents and guardians and parents, guardians and educators that the gender imbalance is a long standing in the education system is a long standing issue that is getting worse and needs to be addressed. This strategy is observed when Professor Miller cited the feminization of academia, which resulted in the imbalance, which resulted in imbalances for males. Professor Mark Figueroa looked at how females adopted the organized regimented educational system, education system, while males failed to adapt to the regime. Professor Barry Sevenews alludes to the fact that because females are more receptive, they are offered more educational courses. In paragraph eight, the writer uses this anecdote to highlight that men are not worried about educational background or professional levels. He refers to the conductor who was comfortable enough to presume that he could match up with a doctor. I wasn't finished there. All right, so I don't know what your worry is. This is actually way better than everybody else's. So I'm not sure what your worry is. Your introduction is very solid. Your analysis is very solid. Um, the only issue I had was the last part. It was not, it, so his name is Barry Chevons. Um, and he was not the one that mentioned about Dr. Doctor. Was it Barry Chevons? Oh, let me just... So I'm not sure what you're worried about because this is actually way better than what some of yours and I think Riley Lamont um, is actually very on point in terms of the analysis. Your, 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 your body paragraph on, on organization is very, very, this would get full marks, very solid. So I'm not sure what your worry is. This is actually very good. All right, so I'm not sure what your worries. Your introduction is very solid, very, very, very solid to the point where I may say, I want to run it through, turn it in to make sure, say, on the TV, TV, for off the internet. Sir, everybody at work did have to help me to understand what you mean by X, Y, and Z. Then start all <laughs> walking at the office, I said, no schoolwork. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is good, man. This is very, very solid. I would have loved for you to have finished just to see what your thoughts would be on the second um to comment on the techniques but this is this is actually very very good okay so, so i'm going to complete it and send it to you okay all right thank you yes um i think shanika shanika go ahead for yes me. sir mm -hmm. okay Sorry, you seeing my screen? Yes, I am. Okay. The discourse analysis. In the expose in let me see, in the expository piece title 82 to 18, that's my number. The writer's main point is that the ratio of boys to girls with qualification is less. And and it is an issue faced by family households and educational sectors which needs a solution. The writer's purpose is to warn education professionals, parents of students and students to why girls are more qualified than boys and being accepted in universities. The writer speaks to these individuals through three main language strategies and three main language techniques. In first instance, the writer uses illustrations expert opinions and casual analysis causal Ana causal analysis but a casual analysis. you have there do i know but it's causal analysis but continue yes the writer uses illustrations with examples of the way girls develop from boys as an objective to convey family households and educational sectors that this matter needs attention the writer went on by using expert opinions that show facts to support his point why girls are more qualified than boys. In addition, the writer uses causal analysis. This is so because the writer's aim is to explain the ratio of boys to girls that are impacted by family households and its environment. This type of language strategy help readers to be aware of the increased amount of girls with qualifications than boys, and this needs a solution. 
Finally, the writer uses various language techniques, formal tone, descriptive, and interrogative mode. The writer uses formal language, which is respectful for education professionals, parents of students and students. Because the writer wanted to gain their attention on how girls are raised different from boys that causes the imbalance in the education sector. While the writer also used descriptive style to explain why educated female population is looking for an educated male to create family stability. The interrogative mode conveyed the writer's objective where he wants the readers to think about the point he's carrying across. These type of language techniques help readers to understand the effects of some types of family households and types of environment that leads to boys not being qualified for universities and need to be taken seriously with measures. To summarize, through explanation, the writer is concerned about the impacts of family households and its environment on boys that leads to the lack of qualifications for admissions to universities. The writer uses various language strategies and language techniques to bring attention to the matter that has been far going and needs a solution. All right, this sounds very similar to one that I read, um, I was shared earlier. Does anybody remember the one that was shared? Did you work with somebody or what? No, sir, by myself. It sounds very similar. I'm wondering, is it that you guys got some information off the internet or anything like that? No, sir, swear to God. It sounds a little bit very similar to what was said before. Um, well, all if right. it is that you... All right, so some things, let me mention something. So the, 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 the main idea is very good. The purpose is slightly... This purpose is a little bit off. Um, okay. It's just a slightly, a little bit off. Illustrations, I think you could have better oh. explain or analyze that section. When you mentioned... Sorry, when you mentioned about example of expert opinions, where are the cited examples? So if you say the writer uses expert opinion, um, then you need to say, for example, the writer uses um, cites Barry Chavons or Professor oh, Figaro have... or some. Yes, you have to put that in because yeah, that is the evidence. The names. Yes, right, sir. because those are the expert opinions. And then you say, why? Um, how the expert opinions know? So the expert opinions is not that show facts to support his point of view. What the expert opinion um, expert, expert opinions do in this case is to build credibility um, in speaking about the gender inequity because it is based not just on his opinion, but there is research. There's evidence of research in that. All right, the causal analysis. All right, another thing that I found is that it's a little bit repetitive. Be careful now, because they kind of keep repeating impacted by households and its environment. Be careful of that, of constantly be okay. repeating because you don't, get, you don't get additional marks for saying the same thing. Okay, scroll down for me. Um, the... Right, techniques. I don't know where you get this descriptive and interrogative mode from. I don't know where the hell you got that from. I'm not sure where. Sir, do I, I don't know where sir, those things come from. one of your slides. In the interrogative mode, um, it speaks to um, like questions that are asked in in the passage. So does the writer yes, ask sir. questions in the passage? Yes, sir. You ask some questions. All right. So let us say that that is the rhetorical questions. You then say. that you should answer then. That that's what oh. you should have written instead of okay. saying interrogative mode. So you said the writer uses a series of rhetorical question. Um, okay. so it, it, you know, so that's what you should have said because I'm wondering where is this interrogative mode coming from? The same thing I have for the descriptive mode. What was being described? I don't remember anything being described. What was being described? Uh, sir, where um they were telling oh girls have manners and so forth, and oh they were grown. To be obedient, okay, all right, all right, so. all right. If yeah. you want to say it's description, I'll you know, I'll accept that. But that's what you should have kind of said in the passage. Oh, so you I say, for example, yes. Yeah, so, for example, the writer describes 
the, the, the process of how girls and boys are raised differently. Da, da, da. That's how you'd phrase it, okay? Okay, sir. All right, so if you say never teeth not now for the internet, it's heading in the right direction. It's only yes, could be too similar to the one before me. I have questions in my head, but if you say yeah. you can't even not now for the internet on the on the exam condition, anyways. Sir, right, I so, wouldn't do that. I'd... Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, thank you very much, Miss Thompson. All right, thank you, sir. Um, anybody else wants to share? I yes, lower your hand, Miss Thompson, now that you have shared. All right, Sherry, can't, Sherry and just share for me. Share screen for me. Just go ahead and share. So it gives me a chance now to just comment on your paper, okay? Miss Bartley, heard me? Sir? Yes, just share screen for me. Share your oh. paper. Sir, are you seeing it? Sir? Yes, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me call. Just give me one second. I call a colleague of mine because she's cussing me out. Uh, or Sherry, go ahead and read. Okay, sir. In the expository piece titled 8218, that's my number, the writer's main point is that the gap between male and female students studying at the UWI Mona is the widest it has ever been. The writer's purpose is to explain the effects that this inequality in male and female students slash graduates at the institution may have on society. The writer aims to bring about this awareness to the audience by employing the use of various language strategies and language techniques. This paper will focus on three language strategies and three Pause for me. Techniques. Pause for me. Take off that last sentence because you already have your thesis. Okay. This about this paper. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Continue. In the first instance, the writer uses causal analysis illustration and contrast. Factors that contributed to the low enrollment of males at the UWI Mona were identified and the effects of that lack of male graduates from the institution may have on society were also noted. The writer illustrates, so I didn't put this part in there this morning about the professors, the writer illustrates through citing from learned professionals, professors Errol Miller and Mark Figueroa, why it is that females tend to be more successful academically than their male counterparts. In the illustration, the writer uses contrast to show how differences in the biological makeup of males and females in their adolescent years may affect their scholastic performance. These strategies help readers to get a better understanding as to why the lack of male students are enrolled in or graduating from the institutions, these missing. Finally, the writer uses three language techniques, namely register, tone, and sentence structure to help cement his points. The register of the piece is formal language, which is appropriate for university students and other members of the educated class. The formal register conveys a very serious and concerned tone. This is so because the writer is very troubled by the impact that the imbalance of the educated class is having or likely to have on the society. To bring across the severity of the impacts of this imbalance, the writer uses interrogative sentences. This challenges readers to really take a look at the situation in a wholesome way as they try to answer the questions asked. The tone, formal register, and the interrogative sentences help the reader to understand the dire state that the society is in as a direct result of the huge gap that currently exists in the educated class at a tertiary level. In summary, the writer, through use of illustrations and explanation, gives various reasons why the current gap exists as it relates to the disparity in the ratio of male and female students pursuing an education at tertiary level, specifically the UWI Mona. 
The writer also registers his concern by pointing out the dire consequences that the current imbalance in the educated class is likely to have on the society. All right. So this, so your second body paragraph is very strong. Your second body paragraph, very, 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 very strong. I like your introduction. The first body paragraph now needs examples from the piece. So when you say cause and analysis, I felt that to kind of mention it. Then you, let, you remember when I was talking about good and like strong and weak analysis? Yes, sir. Yours border and weak because you kind of mentioned them and then they move but on. Mention them. Example. Right. You mention them, then they move on. Mention them, then they move on. But you didn't do that in the second body paragraph. The second body paragraph now was very thorough. If you even look at the length, I'm sure you see there's a, in terms of the length of both, um, there's a kind of disparity between the length and the, just the level of sophistication that is, um, that is evidence in the second paragraph is not there in the first. I would not say this challenges readers. I would have put the targeted audience. It challenges um, policymakers, parents, because it's not just the education system. You know, the writer is really talking about gender, how gender socialization has really negatively impacted the, the educational outcomes of boys versus those of girls. All right, but this is a really strong um, paper. Very, very strong paper. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, anybody else wants to share? Um, sir, I never get the opportunity to complete the entire essay. So I did about the introduction paragraph. You just did the introduction? Yes, sir. But the introduction is easy to write. I would want, I would prefer to see your analysis. That is where the marks come. Yes, sir. I didn't get the opportunity to do it, but I'm gonna do that. So you're going to time. you can complete it and send it to me, okay? All right, no problem. Okay. Um mm. anybody else wants to share? All right, nobody else wants to share actually. People are shy. Let me call some names then. That's that usually works. Rohana, how you're not sharing this time around and you shared the last time. That's very odd. They're feeling a bit down and iffy. <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> okay, sir. Don't don't be too hard. Okay. I will, I will, I will be very measured. Oh, sir, it's, it's not really completed, but I, I worked on something. Okay. See my screen, sir? Yes. It's right, so in the expository piece titled 8218, that's my number. <clears throat> the writer's main idea is that the ratio of girls to boys being enrolled at the university. The writer's main purpose is to inform the university administrative of the concerns of more females being admitted to university with them being more prioritized while highlighting the imbalance and the effects that it has caused in society. The writer speaks to these university administrative using three language strategies. In the first instance, the writer uses anecdote in the passage when the writer gave us a story of a conductor feeling as though he was compatible with a doctor to state his point of self-confidence that men have even when they are mm, never appropriate that men have even when they sorry lower standards to female so i will i will fix that part mm -hmm. Um, the writer also points out that the obvious difference between both professions and why they will never be alike. The writer goes on to using causal, causal analysis where he states that more females are likely to succeed because they are taught from an early age how to conduct themselves, while boys are left to the mercy of themselves, which is resulting in this imbalance. Additionally, the writer demonstrates the use of classification when he stated the categories that girls are grouped in. Therefore, these language strategies 
differentiates how females are more cushioned and pushed to excel in life while males are left on the back burner. Um, so I never get to finish up that part. I mean, I tried to- You never finish, a, you never finish a conclusion either. <laughs> no, sir. All right, so let's go back to the top though. So why is it, and I think this is the second time you have done this, and I think I said to you, for your thesis, why did you not, so you said the writer speaks to these university administrators, it should be, using three language strategies. Why did you leave out the other part and, and three language techniques? I think this is the second time I'm, I'm saying this to you. So it can't, the essay is not based only on strategies. The essay is also either you want to put style or you want to put on language techniques. Please put it in from now for me, because I think this is the second time I'm saying this to you. Language techniques. And as you rightly said, the paper needs to be proofread, okay? There are several, so there's a, there's a serious challenge with use of English throughout the paper. Um, where's the topic sentence in your first body paragraph? Where's the topic sentence? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where's the topic sentence? I don't have one, sir. There you go. So you're losing marks for things that you can avoid losing marks for what I call um, clearless mistake. Because if I give you exactly what to write for your topic sentence, all you need to do is to write back the sentence, right? Sure. You're just repeating what I said. So you shouldn't be losing marks for not having a topic sentence. Um, the other part now is that some of your, so I like the, the, the mention about the anecdote. And then, when, but when you move on though, you kind of struggled with the, and I like the and this the first body paragraph is actually not not that bad. The only issue I had is that the you did not properly develop or ex or analyze classification. It's as if classification is the bastard child or the stepchild. So you develop, you commented on anecdote, then you commented fully on causal analysis, and then classification just kind of stuck. You know, it's like you forget and say, "All right, come join us," but there is no explanation in it thorough development of it. You say, additionally, the writer demonstrates the use of classification and stated that the category that girls that girls are grouped in. I don't know what the hell that means. What what are they grouped in? Um, sir, I was referring to the part where he says, where the writer says. Um, That's why you shouldn't put it in at the paper. Because oh. I can't mark your head. Sure. Yeah, so you have to put it in there for me to know what you are referring to, OK? So okay. my, my, my big concern for you is more your use of English than your analysis because your first body paragraph is actually not bad. So you kind of have to work a little bit on expression. So when you finish your paper on the, in the exam, ensure that you go through and read and try to see how best you can make the corrections, okay? Okay, sir. All right. Thank you very much, Miss Earl. See, I wasn't, I wasn't bad, right? I did, I, I was very nice. No, sir, not for you. <laughs> I was praying, sir. No, Canada filed me down, man. They were filed me down. You know, it's a very polite society. It's very polite. So I'm learning. Um, Miss Masters can go or Tanisha Gale can go or Shannon Melbourne. Who wants to go? All right, nobody Hi, wants sir. to go. Yes. You go tell me over the weekend. All right, no props. I can, I can. Should I give you another passage to, tra to practice? You want me to give yes, you a passage sir. to practice? Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Yes, I would like that because I didn't get. Um, I wasn't a part of your last two classes. I sent you a direct message, but I didn't think you see it. So I wasn't a part of the last two classes due to workload. Mm -hmm. I would like another piece that I can do and send to you over the weekend. All right, so I'm going to send, um, let me send two to you and you choose any one, okay? Okay, sir, thanks much. Yeah, man, um, this is common students. No, I don't want it to say common students and I want it to say my students sure. are not sending, yes? They're giving us expositor essay in the exam. What is wrong with this mad boy though, Jesus? You think I'm going to tell you which discourse mode I'm giving you in the exam? You really think I'm going to tell you that? That's it's giving you the answer, sir. Discourse analysis. Um, sir, I was only pulling you. 
bullying him. Yes, yes, sir. I know, I know. You're trying to trick me to telling you something. That ain't going to work, my brother. I was a student too. And I would have pulled a stunt like that. All right. So let's... Um, I hope you don't take offense to my comment. I was just joking, okay? No, sir. Some... No, no, sir. Okay, because I know some students are very antsy about certain things. All right. Let me make sure I don't give you the actual paper itself. Education. I prefer... Those are the lectures. And let's go into week two. All right. This is the one that you did, I think. That's burnout. I have to be careful now. I don't want to send you the one that I want to give you for exam. All right, let's go back to week three. Beckles. I remember this one. All right, and not, this is not the one I'm giving you. Let me show about Beckles. I'm not giving you that one. I'm actually going to give you one that I think you can manage. Uh, Martin Henry. Mm, yeah, this one can work. All right, so... Students, please use one of the attached to practice your analysis for exam next week. All right. For exam, for the exam next week, you would please use one or both of the attached to practice your analysis for next week. So that's a class activity. Let's say weekend activity. All right, confirm receiving them, please. So you can do either of them or if you want to do both of them, um, I will be able to read it very quickly on my phone. And I would love for Abigail Robinson. I haven't heard anything from you. Know, are you are you okay with what is happening? I I know that you have been at the class, but I haven't heard anything. You haven't shared screen any at all. I don't hear you ask any questions. Um, same thing for Kevon. I know you said that you were not at the last class, but I still don't hear you asking any questions. What's happening? Sir, I'm not too late. Ask question no, no. If you ask question related to the topic, of, I will respond to the questions related. If you say, for example, sir, you know, I don't really understand this part. Can you repeat or can you go over? Trust me, I will respond to those questions because um, I know students usually have a challenge with discourse analysis. And this is why you see I spend so much time on it. Yeah, I sent you a message in the chat. Miss, um, can't do that right now in terms of this conclusion you have to look at um look at the examples that i i gave or watch the, the recording okay okay yeah so you can watch the recording from your class and you can watch the recording from the other class okay but for the conclusion all you're doing you begin your conclusion using a uh, a term or connective that indicates that it, you can just say to conclude, then you move on, all right? I didn't hear sir make any sound. What's his name again? I noticed that he didn't respond. Miss, well, Habigay responded, but he didn't say anything. Kevon, what's happening? I don't hear you make any sound. What's going on? Talk to me. <laughs> Yeah, but you can type in the chat if you have a question or, you know, you have to kind of speak so that I feel that all are, hold on, hold on people.
Uh, sorry, people, I had to, a colleague of mine, because as I said, we're, we're up for institutional accreditation. So we're kind of um, trying to balance those things. And I, I did tell you that I'm in charge of marketing, right? I supervise the office, right? So, you know, I'll get calls from time to time. Yes, Kevon, talk to me. What's happening? Are you okay with what is what has been discussed or if you let sure, you prepared for the I exam? I was, I was trying to observe a lot to see what I can pick up, but I think I, I definitely need to go over the, the, the last class, the video of the last class. Mm -hmm. The last set of classes, I think we have spent almost what, two weeks on this. So there are about four recordings on it, in addition to the four recordings from the other class that you can view. All right, so try and try to attempt something over the weekend. So at least I can, I know exactly what your strengths and weaknesses are. So I can suggest how you can move forward. Same thing for Habige, same thing for the persons who did not get a chance to share. Do something is when you do something that I can say, okay, this is good. This is bad. Say this, say that. Don't say this. Don't say that. All right. Um, that's the only way you're going to become better at it. You're right. You kind of struggle, sir, comments, and then you say, okay, sir, did some office do this, you know, sir, did say, I shouldn't say this. Um, so I, I am better able now to write. But if you just listen alone and you don't write anything, then you don't know if you actually know how to do it. Because it's a writing task. It's not an observation task. It's not a speaking task. It's a writing task. All right? Sir, listening alone can't make me understand, but I was afraid for answering your question because. Like um, if when we just come in at the class and we ask you some questions, the reactor um, or OYO was answering me, we feel a difficult way. That's why if you notice, I don't say in or be in the class, we just try for this. All right, so going forward, I recommend that you say something, okay? Because I don't take anything personal with students. You are a student of mine and you have any every right in the class. All right, no matter if I get miserable with you, don't come to the next class because Mr. Clark is keeping malice. I don't do that. I'm a man, not well. No, I'll, so I won't I make it the gender. No, what I'm saying to you that Does as a student, a listen, Mrs. Class. Robinson, that's why I tell you that I'm here with a problem. Okay, now listen. All I'm saying to you is when you're in the class, you have a constitutional right to ask questions, okay? So participate, ask questions, do your activity, write, share screen, you know, all of that. Okay. All right. Time is up, people. I'm over the, I'm over the, over the time. And I know you guys have another class. All right. So if anything, yeah. prob probably we can do a revision over the weekend. If more, if I get 10 people to say that we can do an online thing and we do a little revision over the weekend, either Saturday or Sunday, no props for me. We can just, we don't have to use Zoom. We can use Google Meets. Yeah. Sir. Yes. Okay, yes, no problems. All right, mute your mic. I think Lira, or probably it's Lira's mic. You want yes, to ask sir. her? Yes, yes go ahead. Sir. Um, you can just, before you go, you can just tell me how I identify the discourse mode. So remember, the disc, you identify the discourse mode based on the writer's purpose. The only way you can know what the discourse mode is, is when you identify the writer's purpose. You can't know the discourse mode before the writer's purpose. It has to be after. So when you read the passage and you say, okay, the writer's purpose is to explain or the writer's purpose is to mock or the writer's purpose is to inform or the writer's purpose is to entertain, that's when you determine what the discourse mode is. What students usually do is that they try to identify the discourse mode first, then they decide what is the purpose and it's supposed to be the other way around, okay? In other words, remember the purpose is why. In other words, why did the writer write this piece? And what does the writer want to accomplish? So the writer wrote it because he wants to express concern. He wants to persuade. He wants to dissuade. He wants to convince. Then, of course, when you say, okay, if the writer's purpose is to do this, then it must be exposition or it must be persuasion or it must be narration or it must be um, description. Okay? Okay. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. You too, sir. Please remember to upload this recording as soon as you can. Yes. All right, Mr. Riley Lemon. If you say I don't upload it by tomorrow, just send me a reminder, okay? All right. No problem, sir. All right. Cool.